Welcome to Legally Speaking, a podcast from the Utah Attorney General's Office. Here, we will be discussing matters of policy and justice, cases that our office is taking on, hot topics in Utah and in the world, but of course, it'll all be done, legally speaking. Hello, I'm Richard Pied, and this is Legally Speaking, the Utah Attorney General's Office official podcast. Joining me today is Sete Aule, who is an ICAC supervisory special agent uh, in charge of field operations at ICAC. Thanks for coming in today, Sete. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. So ICAC has recently started social media accounts that you'll see very soon. We'll have more information on our website when they're, uh, when they're available. Um, but I was curious, Sete, what's the goal behind you, ICAC, setting up its own social media account separate from the general attorney general's office accounts. Yeah, we're, we're hoping to be able to um, connect with those who, who frequent those, uh, those platforms often. Uh, we know that there are different um, demographics who, who, who are on those platforms. And so we want to provide a, uh, an avenue for them to connect with us uh, to, to make a report, Give us a heads up. Give us a tip. Uh, whatever, whatever it may be, um, we're we're just hoping that um, we just want to provide that avenue for the public to um, uh, to use. So, you're trying to go where people are. In other words, this is the modern equivalent of a tip line that someone would use to perhaps report something that they've seen, activity that they've noticed, a suspicious person, something like that. Exactly. Exactly. There there are different ways uh, for for the public to file a report with with our task force. We just want this to be another way. Just like you said, uh, this is where um, the majority of people spend their time, and so we want to be there. Right. So what kinds of things, what kind of feedback are you getting from the the public in general? Do you think that they're willing to report to you to get a dialogue and, uh, and report serious things that they that they see, that they Absolutely. find online? Absolutely. I, I think it'll, it'll, it'll provide more of a, um, um, a personal touch to, to them reporting to us. It's, uh, it's a more of a one-on-one connection rather, rather than going to some website to file a report or going to um, a law enforcement agency to file a report. This, they're just coming directly to us, and so there's that personal element to it. So, from what I understand, the issue is getting larger as time goes on. You have more and more people. Are you uh, concerned that you will be overwhelmed by these kinds of tips? At the same time, it's a good thing for people to report them. You're already overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you going to open up a whole new floodgate of um, of issues? Perhaps, perhaps, but that's okay. That's right. that's, that's what we're here. That's for. what we're here for. So, yeah. if if we get overwhelmed or um, there are a large number of reports, then that is what it is. Okay. This is what we um, signed, up, signed ourselves up for, and, and that's okay. So people shouldn't hesitate no. about reporting these kinds of concerns, interact with us. Again, we'll have more information on how you can access the social media accounts on our website at some point later. So take a look for that yes. at some point when we're ready to launch it. But I'm wondering if you can sort of outline that overall problem and how big it's grown uh, and what has changed over the last few years even, since COVID especially. Oh, gosh. So to answer that question, in 2020, um, the number of, of cyber tip reports that we, that we typically get went up um, drastically. And it ha- it has gone down a little bit, but not not to the level it was prior to 2020. So COVID definitely um, uh, raised our cases. Um, people were staying home, um, not going to school, not going to work, and so um, we we saw an uptick in our cases. The trends that we're seeing now um, uh, there, there's there, there, there's a couple. But one of the biggest things that we're, we're seeing, not, not only within our task force, but law enforcement um, wide, is um, teenagers talking with someone who they think is attractive. And then that conversation escalates to something else. And then all of a sudden, that person that they 
thought was attractive or interested to them is now demanding money or they'll exploit their, their pictures that were sent. That, that is probably the number one um, issue that so the sex exploitation is that sextortion is that appropriate yeah, right sextortion yes so. that, that is that is what we're seeing okay. currently yeah that is the biggest thing uh, so the right so the victimization is the fact that their their personal images are being used against them yes yes mm -hmm. yes so that's different than than what we saw previously which was adults grooming and cultivating personal contact with children is that still oh, no, going that, on yeah too? don't get me wrong that's still that is but you're still talking there. about that's the way it's growing mm -hmm. yes yes that wow. yeah that is that is probably the biggest thing um that we're seeing it's happening on um the the two biggest platforms that we see it happening on is snapchat and instagram right okay. is there any kind of education to warn kids about this anywhere to, to schools to parents um the churches what we, we have give people a heads up because I, I don't know if a lot of people parents especially realize this problem exists yeah no the, the, we we are definitely out in in school districts and the communities um making presentations on on this particular subject um so yes we are we are trying our best i know school districts are doing their best as well internally uh, trying to educate their students on on what to be aware of and um and what platforms to uh, to be cautious about, but we are, we're, we're trying, um, but we ultimately need the, the help of, of parents to, to educate their, their children on, mm -hmm. on what to, uh, to look out for. If they, if, if a parent chooses to give their child a, a smartphone, well, they need to sit down with them and, and tell them, educate them that these are the warnings. These, this is what you need to look out for. If, if you're going to sign up for this kind of platform, for this social media account, okay. Well, I, I need to know who your friends are, who you're adding, um, how how often you're on there. Um, the parents need to be involved with with their with their children if their children are on these uh, these social media platforms. I kind of get the feeling that a lot of parents don't realize that there's a new level of responsibility for parenting that encompasses the their children's online presence. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like parents realize that? I, um, I think they have an idea, but the magnitude, I don't think they, they truly understand or grasp how, how big of a, a, a risk that it is when you, when you give your child a, a, a I wonder voice. about the mental health of children being on a screen this long anyway, mm -hmm. let alone the content that they're engaging in. Right. I guess we don't really have any information about that, but parents may notice some changes in their children. Is there something that parents should look out for, or, um, any kind of like warning sign that their kids are perhaps being affected by either being courted or that they're being uh, sextorted or uh, any kind of other troubling behavior online? Yeah, yeah. Um, if... If a parent sees that their child is isolating themselves more than usual, that, that may be a red flag. Um, if their their social skills or their um, them not wanting to be around family as much as they used to, that may be an indicator as well. If if their child if they see that their child is purchasing things, um, and they don't have a job or their the allowance that they get doesn't doesn't necessarily line up with what they're purchasing or with, with what they have, that's a huge red flag right there. I mean, we just had a case where that was literally the case. A parent uh, saw that their child was was um, was buying all these uh, devices, these latest and greatest uh, things, but that didn't line up with the paycheck that they were that the parent knew that their child should be getting at their job. So was the child earning money? The child was earning money for their pictures on on uh, social media. Yes. Well, there are sites where people can subscribe, and you make money off of engaging in these kinds of right swapping of images and yeah, but and, not children. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what about the more traditional grooming, posing as a as a child or as a younger person, uh, meeting up with them, and then. Engaging in some kind of sexual encounter is that type of thing still happening? That is too? still that is still very much happening. It, it happens um, 
all the time. Yeah. So has that kind of activity always happened? We just didn't realize we it We just before? didn't. Right, right. It's just with the evolution of the internet, uh, with how, how uh, much better the devices have gotten, yeah, it's, um, it's showing more and more now. But it's always been there, yes, to answer your question. So when I was a kid, they used to, they used to portray images of some creepy person lurking at a playground or you know, a candy store or something like that. But now they're lurking on the internet. Right. You can just uh, in, encounter them wherever. If right. You're not careful. Right. It's so easy for someone to create a um, a fake profile and and be on there posing as a twelve year old, thirteen year old girl or a boy, whatever it may be. So. I know a lot of the officers in ICAC, and ICAC is a statewide task force, so a lot of a lot of people on the task force have kids themselves. You've got three children. I do. What do you anticipate you're going to teach them or instill in them to prevent them from uh, being trapped into this kind of thing or from uh, engaging in it? Um, as a as a father, uh, just instilling the trust in them. That they can trust me and what I, um, being engaged with them, uh, and being involved in in everything that they're doing, especially if I, at, when the day comes where I where I give my kids a smart device, well they're gonna they're gonna know what to look for, they're gonna know what to look out for. Um, my wife and I <coughs> are um, not necessarily gonna be like um, over the shoulder watching them. But we are going to monitor what's what's going on and who they're who they're talking to, who who their friends are, on um, on on social media, because we do that in person. If if a, if a, a kid from the neighborhood comes over, well, we want to know who that kid is. We get to know their parents. Why wouldn't you do that on social media? So we we would do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You a few months ago now, um, I can't participated or across the state participated in um, what you call it a chat yeah it was a it was an undercover uh, chat operation chat operation so how did that work and how did it turn out yeah no it was great uh, so it was statewide um, and it uh, ranged from Davis County we had locations in, in um, northern Utah and Davis County Utah County out in the basin and then in southern Utah as well um, we had ICAC agents um, uh, at each location, and uh, they were on the, of course, the popular uh, social media platforms. Uh, they were posing as, as underage children and, and talking with, uh, uh, with, with all sorts of people who were interested in, in meeting up with, uh, with children for the intent of, of, of sex. So people were arrested? Yes. Yes, in charge. In charge, yeah. Um, at the time during the operation, there were twelve uh, people who were who were arrested, who were arrested, and this was a uh, um, a four day operation. Of, so there were twelve that were arrested during the operation, mm-hmm. but then there were another, I want to say, eight pending investigations from the op, um, where those those uh, offenders were were later charged. Okay. Yeah. Um. How difficult is, the, is it to prosecute these cases these days? It seems like there are enough defense lawyers out there that kind of are on to the law enforcement techniques now that it's easy to get some of these people out of it mm-hmm. with a relatively light sentence. Do you feel like that the criminal justice system is working and helping you prevent the spread of these problems? Um, it, it, could be, it could be better. Um, to be honest, uh, we we definitely like to see the the sentencing guidelines be a lot more more um, strict on on these especially uh, these offenses in particular. So um, it, it it it's good, but um, in my opinion, I think it, it could be better. Well, the, but the bottom line is the criminal justice system is what it is. So parents, this prevention and and communication with your children is is essential. Yes. You want to prevent it from happening at all. You don't want to wait till the system has to get involved because that by that time you've already suffered a lot of different kinds of harm. I agree. I agree. When, when these kinds of things, uh, when when a child is victimized, with a fam- when a family is victimized, how harmful is that 
to their future, to their mental health, to the family relationships and all that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, it is. It takes a toll on the family. Um, it's never easy when you have to go into into these homes and um, have to sit down and talk with these children and sit down and talk with these parents and disclose what's been going on. And you can just see the the literal change in in the family's faces. It's hard. It really is. Um, we're human too. We have children too, just like you mentioned. Um, and so we we try to be personable with with these families. Um, ICAC cases, exploitation cases, are very different from many other kinds of cases in law enforcement. Um, we we have to we have to approach it differently. Um, we um, in in the way we interview, in our tactics, in the way we um, investigate these, it's very different from from other cases in law enforcement. And so when we're when we're meeting with these families, um, we we have to be sensitive to them because. To be honest, they, they have no idea that this is happening. They have no idea that their child was engaged in this type of activity with someone across the state or outside of the country, whatever it may be. And so it, it takes a toll on them, uh, for sure. It's a very, very difficult job. And a lot of the, I can tell you that all of the ICAC officers at our office and statewide are very, very dedicated to it. It's a very, very serious job that they're doing, and it truly is a public service. So I want to say thank you for doing your job, <laughs> and thank you for coming in and sharing it with us on Legally Speaking. Absolutely. We'll have more information on ICAC social media accounts on our website when, it's, uh, when the media accounts are ready to launch. But until then, I'm Richard Pyatt. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.